Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of an antique photograph from a contemporary color photo. Open a photo you'd like to use. The size of this photo is approximately 1500 by 1000 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Open the paper texture I provided. Its link is located in the video's description or project files. We'll use it later, so keep it handy. Open back up your photo and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl-J on a PC or Command-J on a Mac. Make a new layer below it by Ctrl-clicking or Command-clicking on the New Layer icon. We'll fill it with a light gray by clicking on the foreground color and typing in 90% in brightness. Then click OK. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the empty layer with a new foreground color. Click on the thumbnail of the top layer to make it active and name it Base. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Distort folder and choose Diffuse Glow. For this photo I'll make the graininess 0, the glow amount 3, and the clear amount 11. Keep in mind, since all photos are different, you may want to use different glow and clear amounts for yours. When I toggle back and forth, you can see the difference when diffuse glow is added. Next, we'll add a soft, dark vignette. Go to Filter and Lens Correction. The Lens Correction window will open. Click on the Custom tab and slide the vignette amount to minus 100. Then click OK. Many common antique cameras didn't have quality lenses, so if the photo you're using is perfectly focused, then blur it slightly. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'll blur this photo 0.5 pixels. Next, we'll shift the colors to simulate what time, temperature, and sunlight do to the color dyes in photographs. Click on the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Brightness and Contrast. Click on the Clip to Layer icon, which restricts the Adjustment Layer to effect only the one layer beneath it. Before we modify the adjustment settings, it's important to note that because each photo has its own qualities, feel free to experiment with the amounts for each setting. For this photo, I'll set the brightness at minus 10 and the contrast minus 42. Open the Adjustments tab and click on the Hue Saturation icon. Since colors do fade over time, reduce the saturation. I'll reduce it to minus 20. Remember to click on the Clip to Layer icon. Open the Adjustments tab again, click on the Color Balance icon, and clip it. Choose Shadows. I'll make the Cyan Red minus 12, the Magenta Green minus 40, and the Yellow Blue minus 47. Click Midtones. Make the Cyan Red minus 4, the magenta green minus 34, and the yellow blue minus 100. Click Highlights. Make it 25, 1, and minus 9. Next, we'll add the paper texture. Open it and drag it up onto the tab of your photo while pressing Shift. Without releasing your mouse or pen, Drag it down onto the photo and release. Pressing Shift keeps the paper centered. Notice it's clipping to the base, which we don't want, so go to Layer and Release Clipping Mask. To resize and change the aspect ratio of the paper texture, press Ctrl or Command T to open the Transform tool. Go to a corner and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Shift and Alt on a PC 
or shift and option on a Mac and drag it out. I want to extend the paper up and down so I'll go to the top middle point, repeat the keystrokes and drag it up. Then press enter or return. Change the blend mode to multiply and decrease the opacity to an amount you like. For this photo I decreased it to 60 percent. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of the paper texture to make a selection of its shape. Make the base active and click on the layer mask icon to make a layer mask. Next we'll add a slight thickness to the paper and add a subtle drop shadow. Click on the FX icon and choose Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, the technique is Chisel Hard, the direction is Up, the size is 2 pixels, the highlight opacity is 0% and the shadow opacity is 75%. Click Drop Shadow. Make the opacity 40% the distance 4 pixels and the size 7 pixels. Then click OK. If you'd like to add text to make it look like an antique postcard and would like to use this font, I provided the link to it so you can download it. Once it's installed, open your horizontal type tool. The font is called Little Lord Fontleroy. I'll choose a size of 57 points, sharp and left alignment. Click on the color box and type in 90% for brightness. Click on your document and make sure your text layer is located directly under the adjustment layers. Type out your text. To reposition it, open your move tool and move it. Have fun creating the look of an antique photo or postcard from a contemporary color photo. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.